Industrial Talk is brought to you by Palo Alto Networks. You've heard me talk about my friends at Palo Alto Networks. Zero Trust OT Security, delivering a comprehensive security solution for all OT assets, networks, and remote operations. But did you know that the Palo Alto Network solution provides over 1,100 app IDs for OT protocols, over 500 profiles for critical OT assets, and over 650 OT-specific threat signatures? Now that's best-in-class security delivered. Learn more about Palo Alto Network's Zero Trust OT security solutions and how you can achieve 351% ROI over five years. Learn more about the Palo Alto Network solution by going out to paloaltonetworks.com. That's paloaltonetworks.com. Welcome to the Industrial Talk Podcast with Scott McKenzie. Scott is a passionate industry professional dedicated to transferring cutting-edge, industry-focused innovations and trends while highlighting the men and women who keep the world moving. So put on your hard hat, grab your work boots, and let's go. All right, once again, welcome to Industrial Talk. I truly appreciate your support of a platform that celebrates you, industrial professionals all around the world. You are bold, you are brave, you dare greatly, you innovate, you are changing lives, and therefore changing the world as we speak. Thank you very much for what you do to make the world a better place. We are also broadcasting from SMRP. 31, that's 31 years of incredible solutions being, I don't know, presented here. It's, it's fantastic. And if you're in the world of maintenance, asset management, ma and reliability, whatever it might be, smrp.org is the place you need to start. Go to SM, uh, smrp.org so that you can get that ball a rolling. In the hot seat, we have a gentleman by the name of Mike, and he is with IBM. How do you say your last name, Mike? Desabri. Desabri. Say that again. Desabri. Desabri. The S is silent. Yes. Silly me. French. <laughs> is it really? Of course. Silent. My, my wife speaks French. Okay. Of course I don't. I don't either, so. <laughs> but you have a last name. That That's it. Good. That's it yeah. You having a good conference? Oh, uh, great conference, yep. Yeah, what makes it great? Um, I think this year it's record attendance. Yes. Right? So, so it's glad to see everybody back out again. Uh, glad to see the enthusiasm around reliability and maintenance. You know, and the, the people coming with their challenges and what they're looking at. You know, I work for IBM Maximo. So very, yeah. very excited about the product innovation that we're bringing to market, how that's fit in. Fitting in with challenging, you know, problems that customers are trying to solve. I love it. Um, and all of it coming together, and it's been in the works for probably about six or seven years to bring, basically what I said, is putting a brain on Maxima, and now reliability into the suite, so it's a complete suite that companies all over the world can innovate. See, this is what's interesting, yeah, at Maximo, I, it, it, it has so much functionality, and a lot of, a lot of companies that can enhance it and bring out some greater value in using the, the solution that's amazing. What What is, what I get a sense is like, I've been in industry for many, many years. Right. And and I've been a part of organizations that talk about, hey, we want to be a reliability centered uh, you know, organization. So we're going to really focus in on our assets. And then one year later, the the devices are still sitting in the cubicle and they're still reactive. and right. and. I get a sense that we've turned a corner from uh, from that perspective, that asset management. It seems to me that the C-suite is finally getting it, mm -hmm. and that these are truly not sustainable from a environmental point of view, but sustainable from a strategy perspective. Initiatives that I th I think that uh, that's important, right? Absolutely. And I, I think that yeah, I, I see that too. So. I think really what the change, you know, probably over the last five to seven years, um, and what technology has done with the C-suite, is we brought machine learning and algorithms and analytics where now the C-suite's looking at it and it made maintenance sexy, right? Yeah. Before, maintenance was always that red-headed stepchild in the back room. So now it's on the forefront. We're gonna do predict technologies, right? So, yeah. But once they go into it, like you said, it's not a tool it's not something that you just buy and you install and all of a sudden you go from reactive to proactive. 
it's a culture change, right? You've got to have that type of culture, reliability culture, quality culture, you know, similar as like a safety culture. You know, it takes time for the people to change and the organization change with the leadership. But because now we have this impetus of technology that's getting simpler and simpler at a very, very rapid pace, companies are seeing the benefits in the business case of actually doing that transformation and want to engage their organizations in that transformation. So that's where I see a lot of traction is that, you know, maintenance and reliability because of those predictive technologies are now sexy, right? And the business case is yeah. easy to do. So you can prove out the business case. If you can increase your uptime by a certain percent, reduce your cost by a certain percent, and you put that across 10 plants, How it's you, significant, it, right? It, it's like there's, it, from an operations perspective, there's always low-hanging fruit. You're right. always going to get, in the beginning, you're going to get some really, you know, wow results. And right. that's really great. Got it. But then after you remove all of those inefficiencies, then it becomes more mundane, for lack of a better term. And that it's not as if you're not operating efficiently, it's just that you've removed all of the inefficiencies. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then that's where it starts, from my perspective, the C-suite says, oh, well, why are we doing that? We're, we're super efficient. Right. And, and we're not achieving those massive, you know, gains. Right, so efficiency and effectiveness are two different words, right? So the effectiveness of your maintenance program is you're reducing or eliminating downtime, right? If you're fixing the same problems over and over again, you can become really efficient at work order management and be able to fix it faster, but that's not the point. The point is to eliminate that failure at its source so you don't have it in the first place. So really, maintenance is about not doing maintenance. That's the goal. Yes, right? yes. Right, that's the goal. You don't want to do maintenance. That's the whole idea of it. And that's where now the yes. technologies are so advanced and they're now getting so easy to apply that you can actually take good leap, leapfrog steps and big step function change across your organization as you're changing the culture, right? Now I'm going to walk away with the uh, statement, you don't want to do maintenance. No, that's the goal. You that's don't. That's the goal. That's the goal. You don't want to do it. Because and I had this conversation with a number of uh, other companies. I said, yeah, it, it, maintenance, the spend, maintenance spend from a financial perspective is a one for one. So you, whatever, you know, at the top, you, you know, what, that one dollar that you had to use in maintenance is one dollar off of the bottom line because you don't get to depreciate the the expenditure and so that's always been the driver sweat the asset as much as you possibly can right forego maintenance as much as you possibly can and then do maintenance at the right time yep. like at the optimal time now where you're getting a catastrophic failure but you're just like right there got right. Beak, whatever right. that is and that's where that's where the technology is around monitoring and around predictive around anomaly detection yes, around condition-based maintenance are mature enough now that you can apply them efficiently and effectively in a cost-effective manner so that you can go to that condition-based approach and then focus on when is the optimal time to do that maintenance, right? I know I need to do this, but now if I, you know, let's use uh, SMRP curves, if I go up that P to F curve, how far can I get up that P to F curve? And the traditional condition-based maintenance only gets us up to a certain point on the knee of that curve. Now we can go much further with these advanced analytics because we're looking at that time series data, IOT, OT over time, and then we can actually start to predict or actually know when something has changed. So you're managing more by yeah. exception than, than guessing when the right time to break in and do maintenance or a line went down, so let's do this extra maintenance that we have or things like that. And then management's also looking at it and becoming more of a partnership with the maintenance reliability organizations because they realize if I can increase my uptime and my throughput, the money that I'm investing in the asset is not a cost, it's an investment, right? And if I'm proactive about that, and if I do it in a way that's based on reliability strategies, like yeah. part of the product we just launched, you can be very, very effective and efficient at the same time. Yeah, I, I what always fascinates me is, is in, in a short period of time, and I mean really from a short period of time, the, the, the innovation, the technology has, has 
rapidly progressed. Exactly. I don't know. I still believe that we're at the tip of the iceberg, mm -hmm. but this is really quite a renaissance from my perspective um, of of the attention that it's getting. Right. Where do you see this going? What, what, what's like? I mean, put your future hat on. So the future hat. Um, let's talk a little bit about what IBM and Maximo are doing now. Mm -hmm. That's bringing the future in today. So. We just launched a product called Reliability Strategies. So it's strategist a, strategies strategies. Mm -hmm. And so what it is, it's a combination of an RCM tool, um, and it's also the FMEA library that comes with it. So it's about 800 assets. So in the past, you would do the studies. It would take you four weeks, five, six people, your best people. Uh, cost you a lot of money. These, these people don't have a lot of time because they're important. Um, so those studies never really get done. Now with an accelerator like this library, you're applying the FMEA, you're not creating the FMEA. So you can apply an RCM study 75% faster and get those same uptime and throughput benefits. Now what that allows you to do is go further into your asset base so you're more proactive. And because it's based on a failure mode, you're doing the right maintenance at the right time and then applying the technology to support that. Is, you're speaking at the Innovation Center, is that what you're talking about? That's, that's part of it, and that at the Innovation Center, what we're doing now, you've heard of chat GPT. Who, who hasn't? Right. I mean, what, have you been living under a rock? <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. So if you look at, um, if you take that, and let's apply it to reliability, right? Where, where does it fit in? Now, it's not there that's gonna take someone's job away. Right? It's not going to do that. It's going to yeah. make really everybody more efficient and effective. And what at IBM, about a third of our company is still R&D. There's about 330,000 people. So we're that old school where we had a certain budget for R&D set aside. We yeah. still do that. We are a 100-year-old company. And that's how we come up with these innovations. So we're applying those foundational models, those chat GPT models, to build out this library, right? this FMEA labor. So we're quickly going to go from... 800 to 8,000 assets. So as Mr. Customer, you're gonna be able to apply these quickly and have all your asset bases covered, right? So now you're gonna be doing a couple hours, what would take you those six best people, three or four weeks to do. Oh, so yeah. think of the power of that. The downstream effect is that, is your PMs get optimized, and then we start applying advanced algorithms. So if we know the failure mode of the asset, we'll say it's vibration. And we say, okay, one of the mitigation factors is we'll apply these sensors in this algorithm. Well, currently, a lot of those algorithms have to be developed by data scientists. So we're also taking that same type of foundational model and rapidly building out the algorithm to match the failure model. So in speak, if you kind of always look at when technology meets, you know, the domain experts, so the reliability engineer will say, well, this is the failure mode. And then the data science will say, this is the parameter. But they're, they're actually the same thing. So now we can connect those and look at IoT, OT type of streaming data and automatically apply that model that was built by the foundational model, not by a human. Right? So now we're cutting the reliability, I mean the data science out of the equation. So that whole full circle, three years ago, it would take you the amount of time to do the FMEA study. I've done this in large auto manufacturing companies. And it would take you two months to set up and do those type of anomaly detections, right? Now you're going to be able to do it in a matter of a couple hours. No kidding. The scale of that, right? So, yeah. so what would always happen when we would do these type of pilots for companies, they'd be like, okay, great, you proved it works. And you proved that on one station. How do I do 900 simultaneously? So that's where we're going to see the scale, the rapid adoption, the rapid implementation of tying the basis of reliability center maintenance with FMBAs to advanced analytics. You, 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 FMBAs? FMBAs, failure mode and effective analysis. There you go. Thank you. Failure it's mode right. and effective analysis. Yeah. That's okay. I, just, I might be speaking fast. No, 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 no. It's okay because I've, uh, I, I'm very sensitive to acronyms to okay. make sure that the listeners understand. Right, yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Now, that's, that exists today. Where, where do you see it going? Well, once that starts to, once those foundational models get embedded in the solutions, that scale 
is just going to become more and more automated. Yeah. Right. So there's going to be less and less effort by companies to apply it. So the C-suite that kind of looked at, hey, I got this shiny object called Predict a few years ago. I just plug this in, all my maintenance problems go away. We're really only addressing a part of the problem. Um, but now you're going to be able to apply that and more assets quickly across the board um, and, and be able to do that in a way that is cost effective. With that said, how do you take in consideration the variability? Let's say motor A mm -hmm. is, is the same motor A that is down south versus the motor A that is in Maine. Right. The conditions are, you know, different. How do you take that into consideration? Good question. So that's built in as part of it, um, called the operating context. So we look at the criticality of the asset in combination with the duty cycle, how often you're running it, right? If it's a parallel pump, one's a backup, you're only running 50%. If you're running at full 100%. And then you look at the environment in which it runs. It's a harsh condition, right? So if it's through your car, if you just took it to church on Sunday versus I'm going to take it out in the Baja and run the hell out of it, right? So it's that way we look at that operating context and you can select those as you go through applying the study, not creating the study, applying it for your operating context and it changes. Is, the, is this information accessible, consistent among, for anybody? Let's just say Any, anybody uh, that company A, company B, yes. I'm accessing this information, this 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 equipment list, whatever, it's 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 available. Yes. For any company. Because it would be impossible to create <coughs> multiple for different companies. It's gotta be just a common sort of a location, right? It's a library. It's a library. It's a library. Yeah, that's <laughs> it's a cloud service library that supports it. Yeah. <laughs> How novel, right? Wow, a library. A library that's reusable and scalable, right? <laughs> it's, the, it's where everybody wanted to go but didn't have the solution or the investment to start. See, I, I, I really, I think that that's just, I don't know, man. It's it's exciting. Is it, it, is so it going to continue to grow? Oh, yeah. So it's, it I does, guess, it's not static. It's, no. it's dynamic. Yeah, it's dynamic. You know, as more and more people get involved, the better it gets. Yeah, it just hones in on, it's like, my gosh, it's just fantastic. It's How did they get a hold of you, Mike? Um, they can contact me on LinkedIn, Michael Desiberg, yep. D-E-S-A-B-R-I-S, -S, um, and I'll respond. There it is, man. I have his name. I have his contact information, too. You active out on LinkedIn? Excuse me? Are you active out on LinkedIn? Uh, I, I go in spurts. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on my schedule. Well... We're going to have his LinkedIn contact out there just because we want to know his stat card, what it looks like, even though it might be a little dated. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. You were absolutely wonderful. Thank you. All right, listeners, we're going to wrap it up on the other side. We're going to have all the contact information for Mike out on industrialtalk.com. Remember, go to smrp.org. Get engaged. Be a part of the organization. You cannot lose on that decision. So go out to smrp.org. They've got symposiums. They've got other events. Oh, it's an exciting time to be in reliability, asset management, maintenance. Big time. So stay tuned. We will be right back. You're listening to the Industrial Talk Podcast Network. Mike Disbrick. IBM is the company. SMRP was the event. Now, uh, his LinkedIn stack card goes by Michael, so just make a note of it. But don't worry. It's out on Industrial Talk. His contact information, everything you need to know about uh, Mike is out there. Connect with him. A lot of great work being done in the world of Maximo, IBM, all of the stuff to help um, reliability, asset managers, maintenance professionals do a better job. Excellent, excellent conversation. Put SMRP on your calendar. That is a must. If you're in that profession, that is the place for you to be. Go out to smrp.org and find out more. They've got a ton of stuff for you to get engaged. Industrial Talk is here for you. We have, we have education, we have podcasts, we get Amplify Your Voice. You reach out to me, go to contacts, it's right there. Let's chat and you'll be talking to me. 
All right. Be bold, be brave, dare greatly. Hang out with uh, Mike and you will change the world. We're going to have another great conversation shortly.